Today we're going to do our first book review, kind of a book club we're calling it, and we're going to do some posts where I let y'all know what I'm reading so that y'all can, if you want, you can read, you can follow along, and then we will do the reviews. Uh, this is the first one we are doing, the first review of the season of the year. This bad boy right here, boom, Sapiens, Yuval, Noah Harari, got a glare going on, there's coffee all over this book. Uh, it, all my books that I read are next to my bedside, and sometimes morning coffee gets a little spilly. So this is nonfiction, but going forward with these reviews, I won't be breaking down the plot a lot. I won't be giving spoilers just in case people do want to read the book. I don't want them to find out the, the ending of, of, of these things in the middle of a review. So I'll just kind of give you my overall feeling of the book, overall idea of the book, maybe an, a rating, all that stuff. But if you want to catch this in real time, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I post all, my, all the book reviews there first before these videos. So check that out before we go any further. So brief, a brief little overview of Sapiens. Uh, it is a nonfiction book about basically human beings, about where we came from, why we are, how we are, and what made us who we are. And I'll tell you this, it is a very technical read, and it is a very serious read. It's not a pretty book. It's not a, it's not a fluffy, you know, light read. It's not Harry Potter. I mean, this, this book, you, you got you to focus. You got to focus. You can't have your phone next to you and trying to read this. This is breaking down. This is breaking down the most pivotal moments of the human race since the very beginning. Another thing this book did that I really appreciated, and I think that is why I enjoyed it so much, is that from the jump, it puts you in a really uncomfortable place. Humans, I think, are inherently a bit arrogant about our place in the universe or our place in time. You know, for example, I believe that we kind of believe we're the best of everything, right? Human beings are the best animal out there. Our time period is the smartest version of humans. You know, we're, we're the only life force or life in, in the world or in the universe, probably. We don't, there, there may be aliens, probably not though. It's just us, we're number one. And sometimes that kind of fogs the past. It kind of fogs where we came from. And here, very quickly, you realize maybe we always weren't awesome. Maybe we always weren't the best. Maybe we always weren't very good at anything. You know, and it highlights why we evolved into what we are now and how we became the society that we are now. And interestingly enough, a lot of what made us who we are now, it kind of sucked and kind of wasn't great. I'll give one example real quick. An example they gave earlier to kind of highlight you know, earlier in the book on how they kind of created societies and created cities were that humans used to be hunter-gatherers and humans used to just run around and they'd pick berries and they'd, you know, they'd eat for the day, they'd hunt, and then move on to the next place. And they would just move and move and move and move. Well, then they found wheat and they found grain. And they realized, oh, well, we don't have to move around. We don't have to run, we don't have to learn all these different berries, and we don't have to hunt, we don't have to do any of that stuff. We can just get this wheat down, build a house next to it, and as long as we take care of the wheat, then we'll be good. Well, what happened was, the wheat forced them to not move at all. It forced them to stay in the same place as wheat takes time to grow. So that in turn created disease, because disease used to just be like, if Karen got the flu, well, we're, we're hunting and gathering, we're moving all over the place. Karen can't do it, Karen's sick, Karen's going to die. Well, in the new wheat world, Karen laid up in the bed, got her sister sick, and then her sister got her kids sick. And all of a sudden, now the damn little town is overrun with the flu. And newsflash, there ain't no NyQuil in this book. So aside from sickness, what it also did was, it dumbed everybody down. Everyone got dumber. Why? Because they didn't have to continually learn berries and leaves and plants. They didn't have to know every single plant. They didn't have to know every single animal. They didn't have to know the anatomy of the animals. They didn't have to know uh, carpentry or woodworking or, or you know masonry or, or anything to build weapons. All they had to know was how to dig and how to rake and how to manage this wheat. So 
yes, it helped them. It was a good thing because it made their life easier because they didn't have to do it much. But without them even knowing it, it made them dumber and more susceptible to disease. Also, turns out that their diet can't just consist of wheat and grain. They didn't realize that. They needed the diet of you know, fruits, vegetables, meat. They needed a well-rounded diet, the diet that we know we need nowadays. They couldn't just survive off of wheat. Also what it did was, before, whenever they hunted and gathered, once they did it, it was over. Now, they spent the entire day you know, toiling the land, trying to get their wheat to grow. So, yes, it was theoretically a betterment for them that they could place down into cities and towns and just grow this wheat, but it negatively affected the rest of their life and they didn't even realize it. And I couldn't help but think about how similar that was to our current situation with the internet and social media. Yes, it seems like the most convenient, greatest thing ever, but what is it really doing to us? What is it doing to us that we don't realize? Is it actually making us dumber? Is it actually making us harder to connect with people? Is it actually making it more difficult to us to, to, for us to live in a society? Even though it may be convenient and it may have its good parts, is it actually, how much is it actually changing us? And it sounds crazy, but just the introduction of wheat, just the introduction of grain, completely changed the rest of human history and gave us cities, gave us towns, gave us working all day. It gave us, it changed our diet. It, it introduced diseases. That one decision to go from hunting, gathering, picking berries, killing animals, and that's it, and moving, that totally changed. And this book is chock full of those examples where little things happen throughout all of time and trickles down to us currently. And we still do things to this day that are a direct result of what is in this book. Another part of the book that I'll mention, they talk about how our entire human species can basically be traced back to two apes. Uh, two female apes split, they're part of the same family, split. One basically was the grandmother of all living life on the eastern side of the world. One was for the western side of the world. And it is kind of funny because they even mention it in the book that you kind of think of humans as just always here. Always just kind of how we are. You never really think about humans as not how we are and, and not how life is currently. It's just... It wasn't always like that. You know, at one point, according to this book, we were monkeys or we were Neanderthals or we were these different versions of humans and we weren't always just people that looked like me and you. We were these underdeveloped or dumb things and or, or maybe just straight up apes. And it's, it's hard to hear and it's hard to think and it's hard to kind of take a step back from your your species and it's hard to take a step back and realize well maybe we weren't always on the top of the food chain well maybe we weren't always how we are now and maybe maybe we aren't all that we're cracked up to be maybe we are just this like an animal we're, we're, we're able to evolve and we're able to devolve and we're able to adapt and we're able to you know we're susceptible to, to things that we don't even know are happening yet and if you are someone who is relatively closed-minded and you do not want to accept principles that you don't believe, or you, or you won't even entertain principles you won't believe, I would not recommend this book at all. One thing that they do very early is poo-poo the idea of a god or an idea of religion. And I am a religious man, and it, it, I didn't take it personal. You know, I, I understood that, hey, this is someone else's idea, this is someone else's beliefs, He's given me a scientific look at, at human lineage. I have to respect that. And I, I'm reading this book for what he's saying. I'm not, you know, he's not attacking me. We're just two people who have different views. And I would highly recommend you keep that mindset if you are going to read this book, that these are ideas, these are scientific, you know, theories that we should think about, we should open our mind to, 
but it will put you in uncomfortable places, I promise you. And sometimes being uncomfortable is where we have to be to learn. And books that make us feel uncomfortable, books that challenge us, are a lot of the times that are the books that you'll remember for the rest of your life. All in all, I think I gave this book on Instagram, I think my review is three out of five books. And most my the negative part of it was that sometimes nonfiction can do this. It can be a little bit of a taxing read. This book was like that where at some points it did feel like a textbook. At some points it did feel like I was reading just text. I was just reading a textbook. It wasn't a read that there's some chapters that I couldn't get enough of, of course, but some chapters were either ran, seemed out of place or seemed like they just weren't following the same flow and, and they were just more information, more just factual information. So, and sometimes nonfiction can do that and that's okay. You know, nonfiction is not a story, it's not a narrative. And a lot of the times with nonfiction, you'll go back and read it multiple times. You'll find the chapters that you found interesting or you'll say, well, I need to reread this chapter because it had a theory that I wanted to expand upon. You know, the whole book, it's not supposed to read like Lord of the Rings. So, but I gave it three out of five stars. I would highly recommend to anyone interested in our lineage, and if, which is obvious, I and mean, that's what the book's about, but I think it did a great job of asking questions and providing some theories and providing some data on where we began and evolved and how our species came about. So I would definitely recommend that if you are looking for answers and just looking looking into our past. If you want to see a telescope into the past for humans, go pick up this book. Three out of five books from The Boy.